Hey guys, how are you? Hope you're all having a fantastic afternoon. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a movie review. Now this movie is regarded as an Australian horror classic, so something very special to me. It was made in 1984, so it's a year after I was born, so it's a fairly old film, if you can count 28 years as old. Uh, directed by Russell Mulcahy, and this movie is called Razorback. And the story is as follows. A wild, vicious pig terrorises the Australian outback. The first victim is a small child, who is killed. The child's granddad is brought to trial for the killing, but is acquitted. The next victim is an American TV journalist. Her husband, Carl, gets to Australia and starts to search for the truth. The local inhabitants won't help them, but they are joined by a hunter and a female farmer to find the beast. So what we have, okay, uh, that's not really a, a very in-depth synopsis, so I'll give you my best rundown. It's set in this very isolated town of Gamala. Now, Gamala is located in the middle of nowhere in the outback, and this grandfather is looking after his grandson. He's about two or three years old, and he's tucking him off to bed one night and says goodnight. And then all of a sudden, this massive razorback, which is a wild boar, but this is bigger than any other wild boar you'd ever see, crashes through the house, trashes the house completely, and then takes the grandson, and he's killed. So the grandfather is mourning the death of his grandson, but the community don't believe that a razorback could be that big to take a child of two or three years old. So they put him on trial for murder, and there's not enough evidence to suggest that the grandfather is guilty, so he's acquitted. But he's still treated as an outcast because they still regard him as a child killer. So he is then um, dedicates his life to hunting down this Razorback. He becomes obsessed with this Razorback because he wants not only to get revenge for his grandson, but to clear his name. Because if he can slaughter it and show them how big it is, then he'll be cleared. Then there's another character of an American TV journalist. She's doing a report on the Australian outback, and she becomes... Uh, a victim of this Razorback and she goes missing. So her husband, who is in New York City, word gets out about the fact that um, his wife is missing. So he comes over to Australia to Gamala and to search for her. And so uh, they team up. There's a hunter and there's the, the husband and there's a few other larger than life characters that I'm not going to go into. You're going to have to watch it to find out. But they go on a voyage of discovery and it all leads to this massive Razorback who is terrorising this little community. So um, that's as far as I'll go with the synopsis. I'm not going to tell you if the hunter gets revenge. I'm not going to tell you if the, uh, the man finds his wife. And I'm not going to tell you about any of the other characters because it's definitely something if I don't tell you about, you will greatly benefit from. So that's as far as I'm going to go with the synopsis. Now my thoughts on the film. Russell Mulcahy, before he made this film, this is his feature film, his first feature film. And before that, he was known as a music video maestro. He did videos for Elton John, Duran Duran, just all those really big names from the 80s. And so it's a big sort of jump from music videos to feature film because they're two totally different things, but skills that you need to do both. So I had a thought that, you know, this could be good, but... I just really didn't know what to expect. And I think that the fact that he came from a music video background really hurt the sales of this film when it first came out. Now, when this film first came out, they treat, the Australian public didn't like it. I think they misunderstood it. I think they were expecting something a little bit serious, and they treated this one as a joke. Now, this film is not a straight-out comedy. It's not a straight-out horror. It is a very fine mix. And I think to suggest that it's just nothing but a joke is kind of missing the point. And I think, or well, I know that this got better, um, a better reception from the United States audience. And they really treated it for what it was, and they got more out of it, which is a great shame. But thankfully now, 28 years later, the Australian sort of population are growing to love this film. And that's exactly what it deserves, because it is one of the most fun films I have ever seen. Like, it's not a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination. There are films out there that are much better. But this film just has so much charm and, you know, it's just so much fun. And if you're a fan of 80s uh, creature feature horror films and Ozploitation, then this one is definitely a compulsory buy because you will enjoy this very much. But you can't treat it seriously because 
It's not a straight out comedy, it's not a straight out horror, but there are elements from both genres that will um, mix in between and prevent it from being one or the other. So it's just a very, very fine mix. And if you go into it with the right mindset, expecting the right kind of experience, then you will really enjoy this one. Now, where this film exceeds the most is from the direction. Russell Mulcahy can use a camera like no one else. Uh, the atmosphere was absolutely fantastic. And I think that Australian horror directors are blessed because we have the Australian Outback which is one of the best sceneries you can have for a horror film. And a lot of Australian horror films here have um, utilised that sort of, um, that they have made the most out of the Australian outback, which can be scary on its own. It's just like the ocean, so, so big, and we're so microscopic compared to it. And it's so easy to get lost, and we know how hard it is to get help and how long help will take. So the Gamala community in this film, you can sense that it's very isolated and where, where this pig is on the loose, you can sense a, a very real sort of fear because no one else is around for hundreds and hundreds of miles and they're all there by themselves. So they have to combat this issue themselves and they can't get any help. So the pig is massive and just the fact that it's roaming around at will in this massive area was just really scary. Now it's a very, very surreal film. I felt that the colours were very dreamlike and I absolutely loved it. He utilised, as I said, he made the most out of everything he had. The colours were brilliant and, as I said, a very dreamlike sequence, um, especially during the night scenes. And that dreamlike sequence carried on into the characters as well. They're larger than life characters, some very, very well-known Australian actors, but you can't really judge them on their acting ability because the characters were so far exaggerated that you really couldn't take it seriously. And that's exactly what the, the director wanted. Now, some of the best characters you'll see in this film, especially from the brothers in this film, the Baker brothers, I felt that sometimes the, the boar took a back seat to these brothers because they were the real villains. These guys were absolutely nuts, dangerous and very scary. But because they were so far exaggerated, it came across as sort of... Um, a little bit of a co uh, comedy element to it, so they weren't straight out disturbing characters. They, as I said, larger than life, sort of caricatures rather than you know real life sort of people. And that's what the whole film's about. This, to me, this film is a mix of Wolf Creek for the scenery, Bad Boy Bubby for the surreal sort of environment and the um, surreal atmosphere, and Jaws as far as creature features go. This creature in this film had the same sort of menacing presence as Jaws did. And although completely different films, you will see the similarities between them. I really like the start of the film and the fact that the director had a reference to the Lindy Chamberlain case. I thought that was really smart. Now, you know, Lindy Chamberlain being the um, dingo stole my baby. I don't know if it was deliberate reference to that real event. But if it was, then, you know, I thought that was a nice little touch. So a lot to like about this film. The soundtrack was very 80s, but, you know, obviously being an 80s film, it really did set the mood. It kind of lightened the mood where it needed to be lightened. There's some pretty disturbing scenes in this one. But as I said, the light sort of atmosphere mixed in with the, the dreamlike sort of atmosphere kind of feels like you're in a different world. And it's exactly what the director wanted, and it's exactly what he pulled off. It was absolutely fantastic. The boar was supposed to be the size of a rhinoceros, and it came across as very fake. But, you know, this is before CGI. And part of the charm of a 1980s horror film is the bad monster. Without a bad monster, it's not a 1980s horror film. And, you know, I've seen monsters that are much worse looking than this one. So, you know, I, I know that the director was a little bit um, regretful about how he did the, the pig. But I think he's a little bit too hard on himself because I think the pig, the pig looked good. And I would take practical effects over CGI any day of the week. So um, a lot to like about it. I thought that I didn't like the fact that one of the main characters was an American and he was kind of an American hero. I think that, you know, I really don't like that kind of thing. And I know a lot of Australians didn't like that um, sort of stuff. There's too much sort of Hollywood hero in Hollywood and we don't need it coming into Australian shores. But apart from that, you know, the, the positives far outweigh the negatives. And if you like 1980s horror films, you'll definitely like this one. Really, really lighthearted and just a lot of fun. But at the same time, you know, there are some genuinely creepy moments. And that is down to the fact that this director really knows what he's doing. So if you're a fan of 1980s horror, Ozploitation, I would highly recommend that you pick this one up. You will not regret it. All right, guys, that's it for my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you later.